Hello, everybody. I am back. And you're like, Jeremy, you sound really different. It's because I'm sick. Like many, many other people, the cold has found me. Uh, so I'm back, though. Uh, Christmas was uh, pretty good. Still have to go and visit some family because, um, you know, just the craziness of what's been going on the last couple of weeks. Then Candace got sick and now I'm sick. So um, Christmas season isn't fully done yet for me. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm kicked the cold enough to the point now where I can at least somewhat talk. So we'll see if we can get through this as we continue our journey through the entire Bible one chapter at a time. Um, and uh, I'll do a little bit of a plug before we get into the Bible study stuff. This Sunday, um, you know, hopefully I'll be healed from this. Uh, I'm going to be uh, doing um, the sermon, the, the teaching at the well this Sunday. And uh, it'll be about discovering Jesus in the Old Testament, which um, is going to be a bit about my journey and how... Um, you know, doing these things has, these daily Bible studies has really highlighted Jesus throughout the Old Testament um, and the heart of Jesus, how the God of the Old Testament, when you actually slow down and you read it, looks a whole lot more like the Jesus that we see throughout the book of Luke, um, which we will be continuing today with Luke chapter 18. So I invite you to grab your Bibles, read along with me as we read through Luke chapter 18. Um, so, uh, it was a couple weeks ago. What was the last thing that we talked about? Um, and, you know, what's the book of Luke been? Luke is one of the two uh, books of the Bible that actually cover uh, the origin story, the Christmas story of Jesus. <coughs> and then, um, you know, it progresses through to a lot of other things and it's been kind of tipsy-turvy uh, timey-wimey no it has been timey-wimey I don't know the verse what, what I'm trying to say it's been packed it's been jam-packed Luke is a doctor he doesn't necessarily like slow down and get to the into the emotion of everything um, he's very facts and it's like this happened then this happened then this happened then this happened then this happened and it's a lot, and it's intense, and it's kind of crazy. So last week, um, not last week, two weeks ago, when we read through Luke chapter 17, it was a teaching about forgiveness and faith and how God just calls us essentially to forgive um, without limit. Um, you know, uh, and then not seeking um, credit for how awesome your faith is if um you know yeah you're doing all these things and you're you're following the commands it shouldn't be well now look at my reward aren't i entitled to something it should be uh in verse 10 we are unworthy servants who have simply done our duty it's not about fame um prestige and reward it's about just simply doing your duty doing what's right without seeking self-gratification on the other side of it on that it turns into the the 10 that were healed from leprosy and only one of them showed back um and then uh talks about how like it the only the one guy came back and thanked jesus and was like yeah your faith healed you and I remember that was kind of a launching off point for like physical miraculous healings and stuff and how that does not guarantee someone's faith. Uh, some people are like, you're not a Christian if you haven't seen that stuff. And that's a straight up lie. I have not seen any of that stuff. Uh, but I do believe that it still exists and that God still chooses to use things that way. But, um, you know, of the 10 that were healed, one kind of stayed on that path and I think that was um that was good it was good that that one person returned to Jesus um 
would have been better if all ten, but it would not have necessarily been the reality that we see today. So, you know, miraculous healing is not the call of faith. And, you know, it's not this seal of approval that he puts on you. Um, if you've seen it or he's worked through you in that way, it's not a seal of a, approval. Only the one came back and followed Jesus. Um, so he'll heal people even, you know, if their faith isn't true, if their faith isn't solid. Um, and that was very comforting for me. Um, cause you know, a lot of stuff going on in my own personal life and whatnot. And it was that reminder that, yeah, it's not your, your faith isn't the reason why, but it is the faith. Like, yeah. Anyways, I'm just talking around in circles now. And then the coming kingdom, uh, a little bit about how the kingdom's here, but not yet. And, um, the warnings on what the last days are going to look like, but really it just means to prepare, to live your life, to share Jesus, to, to follow Jesus with all your, your heart, mind, strength, and soul, and treat your neighbor as yourself, or even better, love your neighbor as Jesus loved you. And then that leads us into today, parable of the pers persistent widow. Um, yeah. So hopefully you have found Luke chapter 18 by now. And without further ado, we're going to jump in to Luke chapter 18, parable of the persistent widow. One day, Jesus told his disciples a story to show that they should always pray and never give up. There was a judge in a certain city, he said, who neither feared God nor cared about God. A widow of the city came and um, repeatedly saying, Give me justice in this dispute with my enemy. The judge ignored her for a while, but finally he said to himself, I don't fear God or care about people, but this woman is driving me crazy. I'm going to see that she gets justice. Just, um, justice, because she is wearing me out with her constant requests. The Lord said, learn a lesson from this unjust judge. Even he rendered a just decision at the end. So you don't, so don't think God will surely, so don't you think, sorry, so don't you think God will surely um, give justice to his chosen people who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will grant justice to them quickly. But when the Son of Man returns, how many will find, how many will he find on earth who have faith? parable of the Pharisees and tax collector. Then Jesus told the story to some who had great confidence in their own righteousness and scorned everyone else. Two men went into the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other was a despised tax collector. The Pharisee stood by him and prayed this prayer. I thank you, God, that I am not like other people cheaters, sinners, adulterers. I'm certainly not like that tax collector. I fast twice a week and I give you a tenth of my income. But the tax collector stood at a distance and dared not even lift his eyes to heaven as he prayed. Instead, he beat on his chest and sorrow, saying, God, be merciful to me. I am a sinner. I tell you this. This sinner, not the Pharisees, returned home justified before God. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Jesus blesses the children. One day, some parents brought their little children to 
to Jesus so he could touch and bless them. When the disciples saw this, they scolded the parents for bothering him. Then Jesus called the children and said to the disciples, Let these children come to me. Don't stop them, for the kingdom of God belongs to those who are like these children. I tell you the truth. Anyone who doesn't receive the kingdom of God is like a child. Uh, the, sorry. Who does not who doesn't receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. I don't know why I read that so poorly, but I did. The rich man, verse um, 18. Once a religious leader asked Jesus this question. Good teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? Well, why do you call me good? Jesus asked him. Only God is truly good. But to answer your question, you know the commandment. You must not commit adultery. You must not murder. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely. Honor your father and mother. The man replied, I have obeyed all these commands since I was young. When Jesus heard his answer, he said, There is still one thing you haven't done. Sell all your possessions. And give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. But the man heard this, and he became very sad, for he was very rich. When Jesus saw this, he said, How hard is it for the rich to enter the kingdom of God? In fact, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. Those who heard this said, then who in the world can be saved? What is impossible for people is possible with God. Peter said, we've left our homes to follow you. <sighs> Sorry. Yes, Jesus replied. And I assure you, that everyone who has given up house or wife or brother or parent or children for the sake of the kingdom of God will be repaid many times over in this life and will have eternal life in the world to come. Jesus predicts his death, verse 31. Talking, um, sorry, taking the twelve disciples aside, Jesus said, Listen, we're going up to Jerusalem, where all the predictions of the prophets concerning the Son of Man will come true. He will be handed over to the Romans, and he will be mocked, threatened shamefully, and spit on. Spit upon. They will flog him with a whip and kill him. But on the third day, he will rise again. But they didn't understand any of this. The significance of the words was hidden from them, and they failed to grasp what he was talking about. He, Jesus heals a blind beggar. <coughs> As Jesus approached Jericho, a blind beggar was sitting beside the road. When he heard the noise of the a crowd going past. He asked what was happening. They told him Jesus of Nazareth was going by. So he began shouting, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Be quiet, the people in front yell at him. But he only shouted louder, son of David, have mercy on me. When Jesus heard him, he stopped, ordered the man be brought to him. As the man came near, Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do for you? Lord, he said, I want to see. And Jesus said, All right, receive your sight, and your faith has healed you. Instantly the man could see, and he followed Jesus, praising God. And all who saw it praised God too. May God add a blessing to the reading of Luke chapter 18. All right. So, um, with that, 
and especially accompanying the chapter that came before and like the physical healing and stuff it's a reminder to kind of pray without ceasing um and pray for those things that seem impossible um is especially the parable of the persistent woman and the the last section there like yell out or even though you know everyone's telling you that it's pointless and that's hopeless still continue to pray still continue to put your faith in god because god can heal so you know lord i lift up my mom that she'll be able to walk and talk again after um her stroke three years ago i'm not giving up on praying for that i'm going to be a persistent widow on that uh and heal me from this cold um and everyone else from this cold um then we get into the parable of the pharisees and tax collectors and i feel like this really fits into um the zeitgeist of our day like this collective thought of so often we feel like we're not fitting in and we're comparing ourselves to others and um how we use social media how we interact with each other um you know in the classroom in the workplace wherever there's these we just have a tendency to think oh these people are have it all together and then you have this pharisee that's just like oh aren't i awesome i'm not like this person i'm not like that person i'm not like that i'm certainly not like that down that person literally looking down on them and then the other person's like i know i'm a sinner i know it but god please forgive me god honors that truthful and honest and humble call of repentance more so than that person that everyone else thinks has it together and who they themselves act like they think they have it all together. One is seen as justified and it's not the Pharisees talking about how good he is above everyone else. And I, I really like this last part. Um, so for those who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. And, you know, it goes back to Micah 6, 8, you know, and walk humbly with your God. Jesus really, God really likes the humble. So before we enter into that next phase um with the jesus blessing the children um a challenge and thought for yourself is in which way can you demonstrate humbleness <clears throat> is there going to be an opportunity to demonstrate humbleness whether that's not taking credit for yourself thinking of somebody else as greater um there's this uh one um, quote, and I don't remember who it's by, but it's humbleness is not thinking of yourself as less, but it's thinking of yourself less. So, it's not thinking of yourself as less, it's thinking of yourself less. Um, so I always like, I, I like that, I think that's a fairly good measuring stick. Um, a good measuring stick for how humble you are and how good you are at caring for other people is the shopping cart test. Um, do you put your cart away or do you leave it for somebody to do because that's their job? Do you make someone else's job in life a little bit easier even though it's not necessarily wrong to leave your cart out? Like there's people that are hired to do that or are you going to make their day just a little bit easier? by putting the cart away in its proper spot. Um, and, yeah, I like that, the humbleness test, uh, the grocery start, uh, cart test. Of course, now that you know it, you're going to do it because you're like, yeah, I want to do it. it. It's a double-edged sword. When you point out something like that, it's do you do it without thinking about that, too? Anyways. Um... Jesus blesses the children is that next section, which I think also kind of plays off of um, that stuff as well, right? The uh, humbleness 
but you've got all these people going like, no, don't, don't go near Jesus. Don't do that. Don't do this. Like, stop bothering him. And she's just like, no, let these kids come, come and bother me. And like that children like faith, like don't stop them for the kingdom of God belongs to those who are like these children. I tell you the truth, anyone who doesn't receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. I There are sermons, there are books, there is so much stuff, um, just unpacking that little bit. Um, what it means to, to do that. Um, it... In their society, children were kind of the lowest of the low. They were on the bottom. They weren't even good enough to be workers yet. Um, they, you know, they were just really looked down on. But, like, children really just approach things with so much curiosity and hope and no malice. So many times, you know, they are just very raw with their emotion. And if there is malice... You know, it's often something, it's a reaction to something else that happened, right? So it's, they're just very open about their emotions. They're very open about, like, others around them and how they're really feeling. And, you know, they're excited to to hear and to appreciate and to love and to trust. Um, so there's a lot of cool things there. And they don't necessarily look down on others until they're taught to. The rich man. Um, the next section here. Which is also one of those ones that so many sermons and... Um, you know, books and stuff like that have been written just about this section. The rich man. And he's like, I keep all of the commands. He's kind of wearing it as a pride. But um, Jesus kind of goes right at his heart. And he's like, cool. But you're rich. And you're just hoarding all of your wealth. So sell it and give it to the poor. Because the way I read into it is money had become his God. His safety net, his motivation, his self-worth was tied in money and not into God. So get rid of that which is getting in the way between you and God. Jesus predicts his death again um, is the next section. And he basically lays out what's going to happen to them. But they... Straight up, hey, this is what's going to happen. They're like, yeah, okay, God. They learn the significance of it later, but they just kind of let that roll off their back which I think is very fascinating and how discouraged they get afterwards when oh no, all of that stuff that he just predicted happened, what are we gonna do? Like he said what's gonna happen, why Why are you forgetting about that last part where he's like, and then on the third day he will rise again <laughs> but they just totally forgot of it because of their like emotional sense but they remembered when he rose again. <clears throat> so the significance of that later became very, very apparent. And it is the crutch of our faith. And then he, Jesus heals the blind beggar. Once again, you know, this is very reminiscent of uh, the children that Jesus blesses. And you have people looking down on this guy. He's on, you know, low social structure, major thing back then. I, you know, he can't really work or anything because he's blind and he doesn't know what's going on and he just yells and yells and yells and yells and then there's a very significant thing here, verse 41 what do you want me to do for you? Jesus doesn't go, hey you're blind and you must want to see there might have been a lot of other things wrong with him but he was just like, what do you want? And he's like, I want to see. So Jesus doesn't immediately go, this is what's wrong with you. He asks. And he asks kind of for permission. So what do you want? You know, well, I want you to, to have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Help me to see again. 
And I think that's a really big thing. So many times we have a tendency to pray for healing of things that we think are wrong with others. Yet, it's not something that they really want. Um, I've asked my mom a few times. She wants to walk again. Um, so that's the thing that I pray for. And that's inspired by this little section here. And for me, I want her to be able to kind of talk and communicate more. So to be able to walk and, and, and talk, even though I'm kind of projecting that with myself. Um, and then, once again, the faith. That persistency in asking even when others are like what's the point what's the point shut up you're not worth it you're bothering god you're not bothering god i'm telling you this right now be persistent may feel annoyed or annoying when talking to god about stuff he loves you and he wants to spend time with you and he's asking you to spend time with him. Even if it's just asking again and again and again and again for the same thing. And Jesus will answer our prayers in ways that we might not actually understand or realize have been pray answered. There's been times in my life where I prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and Jesus had already answered it. And then he revealed, hey, look at this, I already fixed it. But the building that we're in right now for YFC, we prayed for it for a solid seven years before we got it. Pray. 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 Be in communication with the creator of the universe about anything and everything. He loves you. He intimately cares for you. Let's pray. A-G-C, awesome Jesus Christ. I thank you that I could talk with minimal coughing or runny nose in, um, um, things, uh, interruptions. Um, I thank you that we could jump into your word, that we could read your word again and continue this journey, Lord. I thank you that we made it through Christmas, that we made it through the new year, and uh, bless the time that is coming, Lord. You are awesome. Thank you for all the ways that you love, guide, and direct. You are awesome, Lord. Help us to approach your kingdom like children. Help us to have the courage to be persistent in our prayers. Lord, you know, you know I need more financial partners. And I... I lift up that you can work on people's hearts to make that come true that they can join that partnership team Lord I pray for healing from this cold for Candace and for those that we are in community with I pray that I can see my mom this year uh, you know very soon uh, especially with how junky um, I've been feeling all this year I thank you for the experiences that we got to have and Lord I pray that she'll be able to walk again, that you can just fix that part of her brain and that she can rebuild the muscle and she can walk and that she can talk without pain and all that jazz, Lord. I pray for a miraculous healing. Lord, you are awesome. Thank you. And help us to act justly help us to love mercy and Lord help us to humbly walk with you in Jesus name Amen Alright well thank you guys very much have a fantastic day God bless